the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amin. Back to your program, Treasures, and we are continuing commenting on the first letter uh, of Thessalonians. As we mentioned last time, St. Paul sent this letter at the first letter written in the New Testament, and these people were the earliest people to receive the good news in Greece, and they were strong believers. They were happily, you know, uh, carrying the burden of affliction and persecution in the first century. That's why he sent this letter to support their faith and to encourage them and to recall that they have patience of hope and labor of love and also work of faith. The second chapter of the first Thessalonians. For you yourself know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. In this chapter, St. Paul will focus upon the power of the service itself, as if he is encouraging his team, not only the people of Thessalonians the, themselves, but he is also, you know, making his team like a good model of service. That's why this chapter is very important for the servants, because he will state all the good points of the successful team uh, of service in any church. For you yourselves know, brother, that our coming to you was not in vain. So the first point you know, the servant should make something in the life of the people who, who serve. I mean that the, serve, the good servant will, you know, make a real change in the lives of the people who are following him or listening to him. So the coming of this team, the coming of St. Paul and his people was not in vain. There were a great change in the city and people changed a lot because of their service. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, if you go back to the book of Acts chapter 16, you can see that he had a real hard time in Philippi and he was present with his co-worker Silas. But after Philippi, he went to Thessaloniki uh, and in this city, the people, you know, knowing that he suffered a lot in Philippi, they accepted the, the, his words and they followed him happily and they studied what he was saying, so their faith was strong. After we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, so again, the servant will suffer. The servant is ready to suffer. He is not ready just to take, you know, the glory of the service, but he is ready to follow the crucified Christ. So he's expecting all the time that he will face suffering. As you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. They were bold. They were strong in preaching the word of God. They were not shy. They were not, you know, um, um, afraid of proclaiming the good news, although they suffered of this in Philippi. We were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. There were many conflicts because most of these people were Roman and pagan in their mind. And that was not easy for St. Paul and his disciples to convince these people with the one God, the one holy God, the real God, and also the crucified Lord, Jesus Christ, and the eternal life, because their background was fully related to the philosophy of Greek people. For our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness, nor was it in deceit. So they had no bad, you know, intention. They just care for the salvation of everyone. So they were clean in their mind. Their eyes were clean, their mind was clean, their heart was clean. And also there were no error. They were not teaching, you know, 
people philosophy. They were not teaching some good uh, new ideas, but they were teaching the word of God. The good news, the truth given by God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only truth. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleading men, but God who tests our hearts. This verse is full of many good, important points to any servant. He felt like being entrusted by God with the gospel. So when you feel serving God, that God trusts in you to deliver the message and to save the people with him, you have to respect this trust of God. You have to be up to this trust. You have to prove your faithfulness to God. Again, he's saying, even so we speak not as pleasing men. For any servant who serve just focusing to please people, he will not deliver the real truth. He will not blaming, you know, the people of their weaknesses and sins. He will just say good words to please them. We are not pleasing men. We are not. We don't aim at uh, making them happy, but we are aiming at their salvation. So at a time we may face their weaknesses and sins. We may tell them that your way is totally wrong. So we have to be bold in this. Even so, we speak not as pleading men, but God who tests our heart. So the good servant will think all with that God is looking to his heart, is seeing his heart. What are the ideas? What are the emotions? Work in your heart. Do you feel the love of God? Do you feel the love to these people? Do you feel the faithfulness toward your mission? Uh, in what way you think? What do you want from your service? What's your goal in your service? So he's saying, God who tests our heart. So again, for a good servant, he should please God, not pleading people. He should, you know, purify his heart, his goal in service. He should work to be up to the trust given by God in his mission. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness. You know, uh, some of the, of the preachers at that time, they started to be like the lying prophets. You all know that in the Old Testament there were prophets who were not faithful to the truth, but they were devilish in their mind, in their ways, but they called themselves as prophets. So at that time, in the early church, we had seen also false prophets, people who taught people, you know, different truths, different values, different ideas, not related to the holy tradition, to the real truth given by Christ to his disciples and his church. And you all know that at that time there were no written Bible. The Bible was not there as a written book. But the life of the church, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news was there in the church, in the living church, that what we call the holy tradition. So the apostles kept telling all the people everywhere in the world about the Christian life, lived by Christ and gave, given to the church, and how can we be the new beings in Christ, the new creatures in Christ, and to, you know, be saved and hold the eternal life. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a call work for, for covetousness. God is witness. So God is witnessing that we never had a bad intention, or we used any flattering words. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. Although being one of the apostles of the early church, he was never, you know, a burden on any church, because this early church were very poor, 
and the church was suffering from persecution. So he was working by his hands and the team with him was helping him, you know, to cover their expenses because he was not um, aiming at being like a burden on anyone. But we were gentle among you just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. That's another example, a very nice example for a servant that he is like a nursing mother. You all can imagine the nursing mother, how kind, how sweet she is nursing her child, uh, in what way the mother can deal with the baby. So in this way, as good servants, we should deal with the servant people, you know, giving them, them the milk of the good news in a very simple way, in a very nourishing way, and full of um, compassion, full of understanding, full of love. So it's not like lecturing people, but it's a nursing mother attitude. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. So in this nursing attitude, he was ready not only to give them the gospel, the word themselves, but he was ready to give his life to his people. He loved them so much. That's why he was caring for them in all aspects of life. He was not just telling them some ideas, but it's all about fatherhood, motherhood. So pure love of St. Paul given from God to these people made them feel like beloved by God and his people. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. So it's not only like we love God and we are working his will, but also we love you. That's why we care for you. We love you and we need you to be saved. We are, we don't, we live for this goal. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, for laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach it to you, the gospel of God. So again, another message for, to all servants, we have to work day and night and to carry the burden of the service in order to save millions of people. We have to carry the cross of Christ, to follow him carrying his cross, because the, the salvation story is not easy to, you know, execute. We need to help people to know God, to know the truth, and by knowing the truth, they will be saved. For laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, we preach it to you, the gospel of God. Again, any good servant will focus on the service. He will not focus on his needs, but people's needs. He's not focusing on his glory, but people's salvation. He's not focusing to, to, to relax himself, but to save everyone. You are witnesses, and God also, how devotely and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. So again, he is giving us many values, many good values related to service. In order to serve God, you have to keep yourself blameless. Don't let anyone see negatives in you. You have to keep yourself before the eyes of God blameless. And also, you have to be devoted, dedicated. You are busy only with the goal of salvation. We need everyone to understand the good news, to accept the good news and to know Christ. And that's the only passion in your heart. How devotely and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves. It's another good term, behaving ourselves. So in order to be a good servant, you need to behave yourself. You have to work on yourself, on your habits, on your way of talking and and dealing with everyone. Behave yourself in order to be Christ-like. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you 
Uh, the father does his own children. So in different ways, he was working like a father, serving them in a fatherhood attitude or a motherhood attitude. So exhorting, comforting, charging everyone. So some people may need just to, you have to comfort them. Others, you need to charge them. So in all ways, you push them to, the, to know God more and more. That you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So the outcome, the, the goal in service, that everyone worthy of God. So in order to be God's son and God's daughter, we need this help of our servants, the guidance, the example, the love, the care of the servants, and these people will push us to walk worthy of God, who calls us into his own kingdom and glory. For this reason, we also thank God without seeding. Again, as he started the letter saying, I thank God without seeding because of you. Now he's repeating the same idea, encouraging them, saying, I really thank God because of you. We also thank God without seeding, because when we receive, you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not at the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works on you who believe. So again, he is recalling that when they accepted the good news, they accepted it in a very serious way. They took the word of Paul and others as the word of God. They followed the teaching and they showed how faithful they were. So he was happy recalling this good start. Uh, you welcomed it not at the word of man, but as it did in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So it's not only like new ideas, kind of belief, but it, it, you know, it proved itself by different model of life. The word of God worked in their hearts, so the outcome was very much different. Their life changed really a lot. That's why the, the belief, you know, um, showed in their behavior. So the end of this that their life became the life of saints. Glory to God. Amen.